Hello comrades and welcome back to Marxist Voice, the podcast of the communist. This is going to be our final episode of the Towards the Revolutionary Communist Party series because the Congress is this weekend, which is incredibly exciting. So yeah, we probably might wrap up this series, but I'm sure there's many plans in the works for the podcast after the Congress. We'll just have to wait and see. As always, I'm your host, Jack Ty Wilson, and today we're going to be joined once again by Ben Glinetsky, who's the National Secretary of the soon-to-be Revolutionary Communist Party. How's it going, Ben? Yeah, good. Thanks, Jack. Nice to see you again. Yeah, I saw that you had a feature on GB News last night. Is that right? (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That was quite an experience. Well worth doing. (laughs) Head to head with the Tory MP, right? That's right. Yeah, the deputy chairman of of the Tory party over protests and whether MPs should should be have the right to feel safe in the face of protests and other nonsense like that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, do you feel like you uh, yeah, wiped the floor with him? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I, it went, I enjoyed it, to be honest. It was, it, yeah, I had a good time. He was, he was, he was quite friendly to me before the, uh, the really? recording and less so afterwards, put it that way. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be the first of many uh, appearances on, uh, on on television and so on. Um, because, yeah, I mean, the, the Revolutionary Communist Party is going to become more and more of a known force, I mm. think, in British yeah, politics. Yeah, that's it. Especially as we, uh, as we grow. Um, okay, then. So I think we should probably start then with looking at the, the Congress. And, and yeah, I want to ask you, like, what is the importance of this Congress that's taken place this weekend? Yeah, well... Like it couldn't really have come <clears throat> at a better time, I think, although it's been in planning in the works for a long time. It so happens that it's it's taking place at a very important moment in British politics and internationally, actually, on mm-hmm. a, from a world point of view uh, also. The world gets increasingly unstable. I was just reading in the news today, for example, about this big push that Russia is having in Ukraine uh, to try and take as much territory as they can Mm. before the weapons arrive from the US. And obviously that does put NATO in a very difficult position. NATO is staring Mm. defeat in the face in Ukraine. Russia's having a big push. There's very little the Ukrainians can do to hold on. This is a major problem of of global significance for NATO and for Western imperialism, US Mm -hmm. imperialism in particular. There's going to have global ramifications. That's taking place right now. And then uh, at the British level, you've got this this crisis in the Scottish government, this implosion, Mm -hmm. potential implosion of the SNP. Uh, Obviously, there's local elections taking place today. Is it today? Uh, Yeah, I think it's in a couple of days. And I (laughs) I think the fact that neither of us know exactly when it's taking place gives you a good idea of what ordinary people think about this. (laughs) The media is certainly filled with poll trackers and things like that, which I haven't looked at for even a moment. But anyway, local elections are, are coming up if they're not taking place already. Um, and, and that is, that's already set the Tories off on manoeuvres as they call it Mm. in the, in the media. You've got this rebellion of the backbench MPs. That's right. Calling for these right wing culture war, uh, policies and so forth. That's it. And they're all distancing themselves from Sunak because he's seen as an electoral liability. It's a big crisis in the, in the Tory party also taking place Mm. as we speak. Um, so it, it is an important time for us to be gathering, uh, the largest gathering of, well, the first, the founding Congress. It will also be the largest Congress of revolutionary communists mm-hmm. that's ever taken place uh, to discuss some of these political questions. Not only to discuss them and analyze them and understand uh, what is happening and where it's going, but also what is the role of communists in this situation. That is the mm-hmm. purpose of the Congress this coming weekend. Mm-hmm. And what is the role of communists in this situation, would you say? <laughs> yeah, well, look, I mean, there's there's a few different things we need to we need to discuss at the Congress. So, uh, we'll, we'll do our political analysis. We'll have a discussion about what, what is happening and, and where it's going and what it all means. And then we'll have to have a, di- a discussion, first of all, on, on how we can get bigger. Our, our job is to, is to intervene in this situation, is to take communist ideas into the working class, into the mass mm-hmm. movement. There's this big, above all, I mean, one major political development at the moment is obviously these Palestine protests mm-hmm. that are taking place in the US right now. And they're spread to every continent now, I think. Yeah. That's right. It's spreading very fast and it is coming to this country. Make no mistake about that. We're already in touch with, uh, with various people. We'll have a discussion about this at the Congress. But, uh, <clears throat> but our job is to, is to participate, intervene, even lead some of these struggles on campuses, for example, around Britain. Mm-hmm. And we need to discuss that at the Congress, exactly how we're going to do that. 
But alongside that, we need to discuss how we're going to get bigger. We are not big enough yet, really, to have the kind of impact that our ideas deserve to have, certainly the, the impact that we want to have. So we've got to discuss recruitment strategy. We'll obviously have to discuss our fundraising strategies and our approach, because without money, we can't really do very much at all. And we'll have to discuss our education strategy also, how we're going to educate a new generation where we want to recruit we want to grow we've got to educate all these people in marxist ideas in how to take those ideas into the working class movement these are some of the things we'll be talking about over the weekend mm -hmm. yeah well it all sounds very interesting i'm sure a lot of these different topics that you've mentioned uh, education recruitment finances and also the paper as well actually i think it might be worth mentioning that we are going to launch a campaign to eventually get to a weekly uh, newspaper, mm, a weekly yeah, edition right. of The Communist. So all of these things I'm sure we'll discuss uh, in a lot of detail uh, in a future iteration of this podcast series. Um, but yeah, one question that I would like to ask then is, um, yeah, why do we have this Congress uh, and, and how does the Congress work exactly? I think our listeners might like to hear a bit more about that. Yeah, yeah look, the Congress is the highest decision-making body of the Revolutionary Communist Party. It's the most important event of the year from that point of view. And and the reason it, it is so important, and it's totally different, you look at the Labour Party, the Congress passes all kinds of policies, mm. for example, and this and that. It means absolutely this. nothing. That's right. They completely yeah. ignore it. That's exactly it. Um, <clears throat> whereas, whereas for us, it's absolutely crucial because if we want to accurately understand the mood in society among the working class, among young people, if we want to accurately work out a strategy based on that mood, we have to hear it, but we, that, we can't come up with that from some office in London somewhere. Mm. We can't just sort of pluck that out of the air and think and decide this, this is what we think the mood is. Uh, and this is, this is what we think is going to be the best tactic to get the best results. We can't pluck that out of the air and, and just make it up ourselves. What we need is a proper discussion. We mm. need reports from the branches on the ground and actually get into the detail of what's going on, what the mood is, what the political situation is. And... And what is working in terms of strategy, tactics, what is yielding results for us at the moment? That's what the Congress is all about. It's a genuine discussion and debate from which we can formulate plans and policies. And there'll be a bit of debate. There'll be some disagreements, I'm sure, about certain things. But the other point of the Congress is for us to air all of that out, have the discussion, and then come to a decision. That's the important thing. We are not, the, the Revolutionary Communist Party is not a discussion club. We're not just all here to air our various views and then give ourselves a pat on the back and say, yeah, well done. Good, good talk, guys. Good debate. Mm -hmm. That's not it at all. No, we will air them out. We will discuss them out, but then we will take decisions. There will be votes, a decision will be made uh, and a direction will be charted mm -hmm. and we will set off in that direction. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a debating area. It's a debating event, but it is also a decision-making event. Mm -hmm. And how does that fit in then to this idea of democratic centralism? Because you hear a lot of people try and caricature or, uh, yeah, to try and, um, yeah, just sort of smear what democratic centralism is. It's almost as if democratic centralism leads towards, you know, bureaucracy like you saw with Stalinism and so on. So, yeah, well, what is democratic centralism? Yeah, well, it's, it's essentially what I've just described, that is, it's, it's complete freedom of discussion and debate, which is essential so that we can actually hear what is going on and, and, and what the best policies are and what's working and what the mood is and so on. Complete freedom of discussion, air anything you like, air any opinions you like. That's the democratic side, but the centralist side is coming to a decision and making a plan and moving forward. And I mean, you want to you you want an idea of what where, of where bureaucracy comes from, what bureaucracy looks like. It is that kind of it is what you have, for example, in the Labour Party or the trade union. A lot I've been to trade union conferences before that were a bit like this, where it's all democratic at the conference. People discuss what they like. I mean, often democracy is ridden roughshod over these things as yeah. well. But you can discuss whatever you like. You can say whatever you want. And none of it makes mm. any difference at all because at the end of the day, the leadership is just going to decide the policy behind closed doors and mm -hmm. put that in the media and the members either uh, accept it or, or, or leave basically. And that's the end of it. And there's actually really, there's, you've got all the debating time you like, but it makes no difference at the end of the day. That's of course not how we operate and that's not what democratic centralism is. Mm -hmm. So you want an example of bureaucracy? Don't look at democratic centralist organizations. Look at uh, things like the Labour Party and you'll see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a very good explanation. Thanks for that, Ben. Okay, so for the listeners at home and the comrades who are going to be coming along to the Congress, uh, what can they do between now and Friday uh, to prepare for the Congress and get the most out of it? Mm. 
Okay, well, I think there's probably three three main things that you can focus on uh, for, for all those comrades who are coming along. The first is to brush up politically on what is going on in the world and mm -hmm. in Britain at the moment. So uh, have a read of the articles on marxist.com and communist.red uh, and get up to date with the analysis that's on there, but also have a read of... of the most up-to-date bourgeois press. Mm -hmm. I read the Financial Times. You could read the Economist magazine. These things cover what some of the main trends and processes going on in the world at the moment. Obviously, those ones do it from a bourgeois point of view. Mm -hmm. but nevertheless, the facts and the figures and, and things are useful. And it's useful to, to have a look and see what the bourgeois are saying. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, uh, we, we approach it from a Marxist mm -hmm. point of view. But So I'd, I'd say that. I'd say brush up politically. Reread the, the political documents that we produce, the manifesto of the Revolutionary Communist International and the theses on the coming British Revolution, mm -hmm. which was published in, in the communist newspaper. Um, <clears throat> so that's the first thing. Prepare politically, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that way you'll get the most out of the discussions. Secondly, I say prepare from a kind of organizational point of view. So that is to say, like, consider the work that you and your branch has done over the last 12 months or so, or as long as you've been in a member of the party, if that's less than 12 months. Because you will have done political work, whether that's just having a stall, uh, like a street stall, a recruitment stall uh, by a tube station or out on a high street or something. Or whether that's uh, some work you've done on a university campus or outside of sixth form college. Uh, or whether that's something you've been doing in your workplace. Attending a Palestine demonstration is another example. Whatever work you've been doing, there will be lessons in that, that other people can, uh, can get something out of. The party, the Revolutionary Party, is the combined experience of well all of work, all of the working class history that's why we study working class mm. history that's why we study revolutionary history we are the memory of the working class from that point of view yeah but we're also the combined experience of what we have been doing us lot together the the, mm. the, the 1200 of us over the last 12 months or so there's a lot of experiences there'll be experiences of the comrades in durham that are relevant to the comrades in cornwall this Congress is an opportunity to share some of those. That can be in the sessions, but it will also be in the discussions that you have over lunch and in the socials. So I'd appeal to the comrades to think a little bit about what the lessons are from the work that you've been doing. And not just a list of details, but what can you generalize out of that? The details are important, but then what does that mean about the general lessons mm -hmm. that other people could use for the work that they're doing? And then the third thing uh, I'd say to prepare is, is for the financial collection. Mm. So the Congress collection is a major uh, landmark. It's a major milestone in our uh, financial year, if you like. It's, it's, it's one of the main places, the, the National Congress and the Revolution Festival later in November. These are the places where we aim to have big collections to raise mm -hmm. the money that we need to, to carry on our fight. That's why we call it the Fighting Fund. Mm -hmm. So raising money in advance of this Congress, I know every branch has been doing that. Well, we've got a couple of days now. So a final push on any fundraising we can do. Ask your friends and family if they're willing to donate a little bit to the founding of the Revolutionary Communist Party. Um, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's a major event. It's, it is the founding Congress. So if people were ever going to donate, even if they're not willing to join or do much else for the party, they might be willing to kick in a few pounds. That will go a long way if everybody does that in advance of the Congress and we can maximize the collections coming up. So those three things, prepare politically, prepare organizationally and do a last round of fundraising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd just like to attest to that final point there. Uh, recently, I did a round of text messages and phone calls to, to friends, to family, and also just to people who are supportive of, uh, of the RCP as well. And just through sending, maybe it's like you know, spending 10 minutes sending some messages, managed to get £165 donated. Uh, shout out to my dad for donating £50 <laughs> <laughs> to the Fighting Fund. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that'll go a long way in the struggle for communism. Um, but yeah, in terms of the financial collection, actually, um, how, how's it looking then? We're trying to raise £220,000. That's what Joe told me on a previous episode. Are you confident that we'll reach that? From what I've been told, it's looking good. Uh, Joe, the national treasurer, and, and the other comrades who work in the finance department, they seem very, uh, well, they seem quite optimistic, I would say. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we'll see how it goes. I think we should feel uh, confident. I mean, I've seen a lot of fundraising initiatives going on mm. around the country. We've got Comrade Grace in uh, Newcastle has been running half marathons, trying to yeah. raise money for the fighting fund that way. I've seen comrades preparing merchandise. I've seen yeah. comrades climbing 
mountains in <laughs> I don't know if it was the Peak District or what it was. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but there's there's been quite a lot of initiatives, uh, and like you, I've been texting around friends and family, and and you can definitely get a lot of money in that mm-hmm. way. So. Uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. You never want to be complacent with this sort of thing. I'm cautiously optimistic, but we will need that last push over the next few days, I think. Yeah, what was it that Antonio Gramsci said? It was uh, pessimism of the intellect, optimism of the will. I think that should <laughs> okay, be our, yeah, good, <laughs> our yeah. watchword, definitely. But I'm feeling very optimistic personally, and I'm very excited for uh, for this weekend. Uh, maybe there's one last question then. What are you excited for personally about this Congress this weekend? What is it you're most looking forward to? Well, I mean, it's hard to isolate one thing, but actually just today we've been discussing a little bit, a kind of last minute addition, just on the side of a, a caucus of our student comrades, um, which will take place at the Congress because of this Palestine movement, basically, mm. and what is happening in the US and how it's coming over here. I think already in Warwick, in Sheffield, there are occupations have taken place or, or, or about to. Uh, and walkouts and so on <clears throat> we obviously held we we called we organized a rally in cardiff last weekend or, or on friday last week uh, against jacob reese mogg visiting the university there's a lot of stuff planned for our, elsewhere in the country and our comrades are right at the forefront of that they're mm-hmm. right in the thick of it yeah and this is the perfect opportunity to get them all together and have a discussion about it so that's another thing if you're if you're a student member of the rcp do make sure you're at the Congress because we'll we'll gather everyone together, we'll have a caucus and we'll make a plan for what should be, I think, the RCP's biggest ever intervention, mm-hmm. like campaign basically across campuses around the country. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to planning that. Yeah. So what you're saying is as soon as the Congress is over, we're going to hit the ground running with even more activity. That's it. Yeah. That's right. More activity should be a big boost, boost to growth and recruitment and so on. That's the plan. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, I guess we'll keep it uh, short and sweet for this week. I'm sure we've all got a lot of work to do to prepare for the Congress. Yeah. But thanks very much for, for joining us once again, Cheers, Ben. Jack. And hopefully once we've relaunched this podcast series in some way, shape or form, we'll have you back on again. Um, So just before you go, just a few quick announcements. Uh, If you have been inspired by what we've uh, spoken about in this series and in other podcasts that we have, and if you agree that we need to wage a struggle against capitalism and to put the working class in charge of society, then you should get organized with the Revolutionary Communist Party today. If you head to the link in the show notes of this podcast, you can find a link to our application form. If you fill that in, one of our members will be in touch with you as soon as possible to get you involved. And as Ben mentioned, if you're not ready to join quite yet, but you want to support us in other ways, you can give us some financial backing. You can provide a strong material foundation for the launch of this new party. Again, if you head to the links below, you'll find a link to our donation page where you can send a one-off donation or you can set up a regular donation as well, which would be much appreciated. And lastly, if you want to stay up to date with the latest news and analysis from a Marxist perspective, as well as to delve into some Marxist theory as well, you can subscribe to both our newspaper, The Communist, as well as our magazine, In Defense of Marxism, once again using the links below. All of that can be found on communist.red, our website. So I think we'll leave it there for this week. Thanks very much to our listeners once again for tuning in and make sure you stay subscribed for future episodes covering Marxist theory, revolutionary history, current events and party building brought to you by The Communist.